Guys, I've been thinking about this a lot. As you guys know, Allison is an animal that was gifted to me from a person who couldn't take care of their venomous reptiles anymore. They quit the venomous reptile hobby and they decided to gift this snake to me along with a bunch of other venomous reptiles. So she's considered a rescue, but even though she's a rescue, a lot of people are in fear for my life. Should I really get rid of Allison the Black Mamba? What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I know what you're probably thinking. This is going to be a real interesting video. Is he really getting rid of his black mama? Is this really going to happen? Guys, I've been thinking about this a lot. As you guys know, Allison is an animal that was gifted to me from a person who couldn't take care of their venomous reptiles anymore. They quit the venomous reptile hobby, and they decided to gift this snake to me along with a bunch of other venomous reptiles. Obviously, of all the venomous reptiles that this person gave me, this black mamba is the most intimidating animal that was received. And, and it is every bit of a 10-foot black mamba. Allison is a beast of a snake. And every time I handle the snake, I get comments like crazy. Why? We don't want you to handle this snake. We're scared for you. Try to do a lockbox. Don't handle it. We don't want you to get near this snake. A lot of people are even commenting, get rid of Allison. Allison is technically a rescue. She's an animal that couldn't be taken care of by the owner and she had to be rehomed. So she's considered a rescue, but even though she's a rescue, a lot of people are in fear for my life. I understand that. I understand that so much. And that's why I'm really thinking right now, should I really get rid of Allison the Black Mamba? I mean, this is a snake that I've looked forward to working with my whole life. I love Black Mamas, but she is a very dangerous reptile. So with a lot of thinking, all, all these comments that I've been seeing like crazy on my YouTube channel about Alice in the Black Mamba, get rid of her, put her in a lockbox, don't handle her, please, get, we don't want to see you get her channel. With all that information taken in, I've, I've come to the understanding of what I need to do. And that is why today we're doing a new unboxing for my new male Black Mamba. Yes, I got a new Black Mamba male. It's only about a year old. It's three and a half feet long or three feet or so. And it's a gift from Dingle Dinkleman over in Africa. Thank you so much, Dingle Dinkleman. Go check out his channel after you see this video. He does plenty of stuff with Black Mamas going into houses and removing them from people's homes, basically saving the snakes' lives and also the people themselves. So, thank you very much, Dingo Dinkleman, for my new Black Mamba mail. So yes, the Black Mamba is in here. I just need a witches. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, this animal is contained. I have him in a container right here. This snake came all the way from Africa a couple days ago. And uh, it came in in a shipment with some other snakes that were going to a fellow keeper that you guys might know. So you're gonna see a video on someone else's channel pretty soon of their new snakes. And uh, this is our new baby black mamba. And even though it's contained right now, you gotta be careful because it does have ventilation holes and people have been envenomated through the ventilation hole. So check this out. Look at that little, beautiful little face. This is a confirmed male black mamba. Look how this snake looks around. Look at that cute little snake. And just like king cobras, even though this is just a year old snake, there are fairly large venomous reptiles. Black mambas, the record is actually upwards to 14 feet long. Think about that, that's a massive black mamba. Look at Allison right now. Allison is a 10 foot long, solid black mamba female. And these snakes have the potential to get to 14 feet, but typically they usually get eight to 10 feet long. I'm super excited because Allison's pretty big, but the males of the black mamba species get much bigger than the females. So just like the King Cobras. So this little male that we're gonna have to think of a name for, you know, I've always thought of the name um, Bill, like uh, is in Kill Bill, they have a black mamba. I thought Bill would be a cool black mamba name. Dingo has been suggesting to name this animal Dingo, which I'm thinking about as well, but I want you guys to comment below. What do you think I should name my new black mamba? Obviously he is so small. Look how tiny he is. Look next to my thumb, how big his head is. Look at that face. He's a very small black mamba. He's captive bred, which is very important. And uh, he's obviously not gonna go in the enclosure with Allison right away, because look how big Allison is. Now, to my knowledge, black mambas aren't cannibalistic, but also to my knowledge, all snakes can potentially be cannibalistic. That black mamba's way too small to go in with little uh, Allison over here right away. So what we're gonna do is set up this nicely sized cage over here, because. I knew that Dingo was sending me a black mamba. I wasn't sure how big it is. I thought it'd be more close to like four or five feet, but this one's just a year old. So this is plenty of space for this animal. It is a vision cage, so it's customized for snakes not to escape. There's no other way of getting out. This is all ventilation back here. It's all secured vent. And we have the glass for taking out the animal. 
for husbandry. Now, if you look at this enclosure, it's solid, it's sealed. We even have the key right here so nobody can access it. Here with the Florida Fish and Wildlife, to have a venomous reptile permit, you need a snake-proof building, you need snake-proof cages, and also a lot of experience to even be owning these animals in general, which is everything we have here. So, now the thing about this enclosure is it looks nice and secure, but if you look real quick, it's, it's just got just a little crack in between the two sheets of glass that open up right here. And that snake most likely would never be able to get through that little crack, but you know what? Just like octopus, just like rats, there are many animals that will surprise you and get through the smallest spaces, and we don't want no risk of a black mamba this small. Look how tiny this thing is. Look at him. It's a big snake. It's the same size as a yearling king cobra, so it's a good sized snake. But even though his head is a decent size, I do not want to risk a potential escape. So just to take extra precaution, what I'm going to be doing is taking this insulator or this foam that actually has sticky sides, and I'm actually going to set it up all along down the glass, up towards the lock, and right below the lock. So there's no way, God's green earth, that the snake could ever escape. Although this is a snake-proof room, and if a snake got out of the enclosure, it can't actually leave this double-doored room. But it's always good to take extra security because this is a black mamba. It is one of the most athletic snakes on the planet. And also, it just being a snake makes it an escape artist. So we got to make sure it's nice and secure. So what we're going to be doing now is setting up this enclosure. I'm going to be taking care of the strips to put up here in the glass. And then we have a whole box of new supplies right over here. I'm not going crazy with bioactive or anything like that. We're going to be doing some big plastic plants. We're going to be doing nice big logs. I got a nice hide in here so this thing can feel nice and secure. And a nice big water bowl we're going to put right at the front of the entrance so it's easy to put water into that bowl and get them hydrated. So, I hope you guys are excited. We're going to be setting up the new Black Mamba enclosure. Comment below. Should we name him Bill? Should we name him Dingo? Should we name him Toto? Should we name him Please Get Rid of Him? Wait, wait, that's not a name. Anyways, let's get to designing this enclosure. Alright guys, so what we're going to do is take this glass down and we're going to begin the process, look at this, as I'm doing everything, we have King Tut right here, getting ready to strike at my legs, he's just so defensive. Uh, one of the next things we're going to have to do is get him a nice big cage, add more hiding spots so he's not so cantankerous striking at the glass. Anyways, getting distracted, I love that snake, he always captures my attention when I'm least expecting it. So, let's do this, I'm going to put these strips all along the glass, like I said, for extra security going down to the lock and below the lock. And then after that, we're going to start setting up the actual enclosure. So let me get something to cut this with. And let's start getting creative and crafty. Oh, Ruth. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. What do you have this for? You're a character. All right. Anyways. Oh, I'm so excited. This Black Mamba is awesome. I'm so happy. Dingo has actually been talking about sending me a Black Mamba uh, since before coronavirus. So over six months now, I've been waiting for a Black Mamba. And technically, Dingo was actually supposed to send me my first ever Black Mamba, but then out of nowhere, in between the time he was supposed to send me a young male, and uh, right now, I, I received Alice in the Black Mamba randomly from a Venomous Keeper that decided to give up his whole Venomous collection. So in between that time and now, I got Allison, which actually worked out, because now that I know that I have a female, Dingo knew he could send me a male and I'll have a pair of Black Mambas, which is really cool. And you know what, you guys are probably thinking, Chandler, why are you going to breed black mambas? What are you going to do with a bunch of baby black mambas? Well, simple as this. I obviously don't believe that black mambas are pets. I don't want to sell them to anyone in the private collections unless it's somebody that I've known for a very long time and they're very reputable and responsible. For the most part, when I produce black mambas in the future, I want to donate all the babies to a venom lab that will take the venom work seriously and create anti-venom. So, not just anti-venom, but pharmaceutical purposes as well. So, just to clarify, I really have no interest of selling deadly animals into the pet trade. Everything that I do and everything I work towards is for conservation, preservation of wildlife, and bringing awareness. So, if you guys want to come and see animals like this, come on over to the facility, or in the future, get yourself a safari to Africa and go visit Dingle Dingleman. Thank you again, Dingle. I appreciate you. Beautiful. Look at this. Now the snake cannot get out at all. Nice and secure. Beautiful. Super important. I felt like I had to take that extra precaution, even though I bet the snake can get through. You never know. Snakes are escape artists. All they have to do is think of ways to get out of their enclosure. So you have to be smarter. So we're going to set up this enclosure. It's a little toasty in the snake house. I'm not going to put a light on this right away just because all the snakes are seeming to get a perfect temperature for getting nice and toasty to digest that food. We're just going to make it real simple for now. I got a nice hide 
flat to the ground, add extra security just in case this mamba doesn't feel like hanging out on the branches because it's gonna have to be, it's gonna have to get used to being on display for the public. Just like Allison, she was a little skittish at first, but now she's pretty content. As you can see, I can get close to Allison. She doesn't get too spooked. She just throws her tongue out a little bit, picks up some scent. She's like, are you gonna feed me or what are you doing here today, huh? So she's pretty laid back, she's doing well. And what's really exciting is since this mamba is so young, it's just a young little mamba, it's gonna get used to the way I handle the snakes. It's gonna get used to the way things are getting done around here. And this snake will be very relaxed, or at least that's what I'm hoping. It will start to understand that there's a, there's a good relationship in between myself and the animal and when it comes to maintaining the enclosures, it's not too hectic. Although Allison has given us a run for our money a few times taking her out, she's starting to learn that I'm not out to get her and that's what's important about this because look, I get near her, she doesn't start flinching, she doesn't get twitchy, it's all progress and that's what's going to happen with this young black mamba. I'm just going to stick this hive right in the back here, nice and simple, not going too crazy. You know, we just got this snake, and the reason I'm not really spooked about quarantine and whatnot, I'm just putting strains in the room, is this is a captive bred snake, and it's been in captivity its whole life. It's perfect. What's interesting is the black mamba that Dingo was originally supposed to send me is a black mamba that he caught on a house call. And on that house call, he caught like a big 9-10 foot female, and then he caught one of its babies that were like that big. That baby was awesome. He was talking about sending it to me, and that was like right as Corona was happening, so six plus months ago. And he had the snake. He was getting ready to send it to me, and then out of nowhere, its penis prolapsed. Can you believe that? Snakes have two penises. They're called hemipenes, and the penises prolapsed, which means they stuck out of the cloaca and didn't go back inside the snake. And he was worried about it. He was keeping me updated, and eventually the snake actually just passed away. So. It kind of worked out that I didn't get that animal, and then I ended up getting Allison being a female, and then it gave him the idea of, okay, I'll send him a male. So, thanks again, Dingo, I really appreciate it. You're just, you're really helping raise the anxiety for my parents. They love seeing me get more mambas. If you thought they were comfortable with the snakes I have, you should hear them talk about me with the black mambas. Cool, we got our big logs, we got some real skinny ones, and I'm not gonna be joining them into this enclosure because this is just one of the many enclosures this mamba's gonna live in. This mamba's gonna get big. Like I said, they have the potential to get over 13 feet long. That is huge. What I'm gonna do is just have this as a grow-out enclosure. And once that mamba gets bigger, we'll keep upgrading in enclosures, and we'll go on from there. So let me see, I'm gonna get a big log somewhere right about here. That's gonna act as a prop for these skinnier branches. All right, you cool cats and kittens. Let me just get out some more plants. Like I said, we're doing fake plants. We're not doing a bioactive setup. Just a nice, simple vision cage style setup. Get some nice shrub, make it look nice and green in here. Let me see, find different spots to prop this up in. Shove it in the little wood cracks. Just make it look natural. So far, not doing a good job. <laughs> Looking good, looking good. Super simple setup, but hey, that's all we're looking for right now. You know, we just got this animal. We want to be able to observe the animal, make sure he's on. What are you doing? Big Bertha's hanging out, looking around. Make sure this animal's in tip-top shape, and we have a good view of the animal. I'm gonna put the water right here at the edge, and the key to putting the water bowl right here at the corner where the glass is, is so when I'm doing maintenance, simple maintenance of filling up the water, you crack the glass, you fill it up the water, there's no need to have to reach in the back of the enclosure to have to remove the snake. Try and limit that as much as possible. Because although I want to handle this animal and I want him to get used to me, he's new to this environment. We don't want to stress him out. Because it's very easy to do that to a snake, especially one that just traveled all the way from Africa. Oh yeah, it's going to be like a little rainforest. We're not going to know where the hell this thing is. <laughs> it's going to be a game for the kids. Where's the black mamba? Where is the mommy? It's going to come from the <laughs> Hopefully not. Allison doesn't seem to do that. And uh, Bill seems to be pretty relaxed as well. He's only gaped his mouth at me once. But hey, they're not so much like um, Egyptian cobras. They're sitting there all day striking and hooding up at you. At the end of the day, a black mamba wants to avoid people. They're very shy snakes. And although lots of stories out there coming out of Africa are saying, the mamba chased me. Ah, the mamba was in a tree and it bit five cattle as the cattle came through and they all died. No, it's, it's ridiculous. The snakes want nothing to do with us. They always try to avoid us. And you guys can see that when I take out Allison. She's always trying to shoot the opposite direction. It's always me bringing her back, obviously, because we have to keep her contained. Uh, but at the end of the day, mamas don't want to waste their venom on us. 
they have somewhat of a small venom yield. I mean, they got a lot of venom, but compared to a King Cobra or a Gaboon Viper, you know, their venom yield isn't gigantic. It's just those two venom glands. And once they use too much of that venom, now they got nothing for their food. So if you think about it, venom is specifically to take down their food. It's hard to make, it's a protein. It takes energy to make that venom. So if they waste it on you, it's wasted energy, it's wasted time, it's a wasted meal for the future. So in reality, when it comes to mambas being aggressive and mambas coming after people, mambas chasing people, that is all nonsense. Snakes want nothing to do with us, and you guys are going to learn that more and more as you see these black mambas on the channel, in captivity, and in the wild in the future. Hopefully 2021, I'm coming for you, dingo! Chill out here. Alright guys, I think that's about it for now. Very simple, like I said. I'm not going crazy with this setup. We want to make it very simple and easy to maintain for this animal. All right, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to get some fresh water for the mamba, and then we're going to unbox this mamba and put him into his new enclosure. All right, guys, moment of truth. We're going to be unboxing the little mamba. We just got to get this container open. We've got some tape sealing the sides. There we go. We're going to see how the snake acts because Dingo warned me that this snake can be very flighty and acts every bit of a black mamba. So we've got to be very careful. I've never even used one of these containers. So let me slowly crack this open and see how it works. Okay. Yeah, this is new for me. I've never used this type of container. It's awesome. It stays sealed. It's very good. Okay. So the container lid is not secure anymore. I'm just going to pop that off. Ooh, this snake is so pretty. From outside the container, it's gorgeous, but when you open it up and you actually get a good look at this snake, it is insanely beautiful. I'm going to spin this around so you guys can see. Look at that black mamba. Look how beautiful this snake is. Perfect coffin shaped head. I've actually never seen a black mamba this small in person, so this is really cool for me to actually get the opportunity to work with one this young and develop a relationship with this snake. Look at this. He said it's around three feet long, that's what it looks to be. Look at the coloration of this snake, look at that thing. That is a beautiful black mamba. All of my buddies that have checked this snake out already, Tyler, Justin, everyone's been saying, wow, that is a beautiful black mamba. Thank you so much, Dingle Dinkleman. Huge shout out to Dingo for hooking it up with the mamba. As you can see, the mamba's starting to get a little flighty. He's wondering what's going on. He's trying to make a little bit of an escape. Look at that snake. That is a beautiful yearling black mamba. What a good looking animal. Look at him, he's just probing up, checking out the area, picking up all the new scents. This is insane. Remember, this animal came all the way from Africa. So he's been sitting in a container, doing his thing. Look at his face. Look at him, he's just investigating, looking around. This is actually like a four foot long black mamba. So a good size snake. Let's get him into the enclosure. See what like he's seeing real twitchy, real wiry. There we go, right into the enclosure. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. Look, he's checking out the area. He's investigating. This is too cool. All right, his tail is just going in. He's starting to pick up all the sets. Look, he's investigating, this is so cool. Just like a little pink cobra, super curious. That is so cool. This is plenty of space for this mamba. And I'm going to get a light on top of this enclosure very soon, just for today. We're going to let him sit in the dark, be nice and relaxed. He'll get lighting from the room itself, and he's going to enjoy his new enclosure. This is super exciting stuff. Thank you so much, Dingle Dinkman. I really appreciate the new Black Mamba, and I can't wait for you to get a plane ticket over here to America so I can show you some other wildlife up close and we can have a good time. This is an extremely arboreal snake, which needs to come into thought when you're keeping them in an enclosure like a vision cage, because the vision cage actually has a lip up here and a lot of the boreal species of snake will utilize that lip to hide, especially mambas. Him being this small, he's going to realize that this lip is here. And if he wants to hide in the dark and be elevated, this is going to be his favorite spot, which is something that you have to be very aware of when you work with venomous reptiles. Because if you don't think about stuff like that, it's very easy to make a mistake thinking the snake's in that hide, reaching in, getting tagged on top of the hand. Number one rule when it comes to working with venomous reptiles, never Never do any husbandry, never maintain the enclosure with the animal still inside the enclosure. Whenever you're gonna do any servicing of the enclosure, always take the venomous reptile out and secure it inside enclosure. But 
That's only for the people out there working with black mamas and cobras and stuff like that. Most of you guys are just enjoying the snakes from home and are getting to learn to love snakes in general, which is what I really appreciate about you guys supporting this channel. So thank you so much. Now, I think this is going to be it for the rest of this episode. I've got lots to do today. i got to clean up my Bushmasters. We're going to do an episode on that, but that's going to be coming out on Patreon. If you guys want to get more exclusive content that doesn't come out on this channel, check us out on Patreon, Chandler's Wildlife Club. we got exclusive merch, videos, pictures, and updates on what's going to happen in the future. All I can say is 2021 Chandler's Wild World might be coming into full force. So, very excited for those news. If you guys want your own merch, Allison, don't play no sh get on Teespring, we've got Old Hail the King with Kevin the King Cobra, we got Tank Tops, we also got Be Chill Like Ziggy, and we're working on more stuff that's going to be coming out, Bushmaster, Lace Monitor merch, all kinds of really cool stuff to come in the future. I love you guys, I will see you on the next one, stay beautiful, stay safe, but most of all, uh, carry lots of anti-venom and love everyone, just, just be nice, be nice, hey, you having a bad day, so you know what? Maybe they're having a bad day too. Maybe I should just be more happy and make everyone happy. And you know, you know, everyone needs to laugh. Everyone needs to laugh. That's why I did the beginning of the video like this. I'm gonna get rid of my mama. Psych! <laughs> Pay attention! I ain't getting rid of no venomous reptile. <laughs> if I could keep a velociraptor, I would. What's up, Chris Pratt? What's up, Chris Pratt? Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> How tall is Chris Pratt? Give me a second. Oh, he's 6'2. Um. Yeah, three inches tall. That's fine. Yeah, what's up, Chris Pratt? What's up? Mm, I don't go in front of CGI dinosaurs. What's up? Anyways, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, stay gangster. And that is why today we're doing a new unboxing for my new male black mama. Yes, 